This is Mark Kepler, Purdue University Extension Service here at the Fulton County Fair. We're in the rabbit barn right now, and what we want to do is talk about how to show a rabbit and all the things that go on with rabbits in this barn. So, I have a 4 H'er with me, and introduce yourself. Um, I'm Briley Tell. I've been in the rabbit barn for eight years now. Eight years. And yeah. so how many years you've been in 4-H? Yeah. Eight years. Eight years. And how many years you got left? Two. Two more years. Yep. You're going to be a 10-year 4-H member sometime. Yeah. So where do you, uh, what club are you part of? I'm part of the Fulton County Hoppers. Hoppers. So the rabbit club, rabbit showers have mm -hmm. their own club, and yes. Hoppers is the name of that yes. club. Okay, good. So what we're going to do is go through a little bit about what a judge is looking for in rabbits and how to show a rabbit. So let's start out by, I bet this bunny's got a name. Yes, this is Pete. Pete? Yes. Okay. So Pete, how old is Pete? Pete is only about a year old. A year old. Yeah. So he would be in a category, uh, Pete obviously is a male, so we yes. call that a what? That's a buck. That's a buck. And so he's a buck. But he's some kind of a buck yes. when it comes to judging. When it would be shown, he would be shown as a senior buck. Senior buck. Yeah. Okay. He's only a year old, but he's a senior already. Yeah. Juniors are only until they're six months. Six months old. Okay. So he's being shown as a, as a senior buck. And what breed is this? Pete is a Dutch. A Dutch. Yes. And that's that white belt coming yeah. across there. That's what a Dutch ends up having. You only have pretty much Dutch rabbits here, don't you? Yeah. Okay. I have you have a whole row yes. of Dutch rabbits, 12 of them? Yeah, I brought 12. All right. They look really good back there. How come you go with Dutch rabbits? What do you like about Dutch? Um, I just like their personality types and the other, just like the people that I've met through them. Okay. So people have gotten you interested yeah. in showing this breed and then you really like working with those different people. Yeah. Okay. There are other breeds here. Well, uh, California is a very common yes. breed. A lot of people like that. And, White rabbit with brown ears. What other kind of breeds do you normally see around here? Um, there's the Holland Lops and other kind of Lops, and those are the ones that have the floppy ears that okay. droop down. Okay. And then there's also some that are used more as fur breeds, and those are like your Angoras and your Lion Heads, and there's only a few of them here. Okay, so there's some Rexes here too? Yes. That's a fur breed also. Yes. Okay, really smooth, smooth fur on there. And so they are then used, and commercially they're used that pelt then is for lining of of, I don't know what, gloves and a variety of yeah. things like that to get it. Okay, so we got a senior buck here, mm -hmm. and and if you're showing this to the judge, what is the judge looking for on this? Well, oh, wait a minute, let me stop. What did you do to get this rabbit ready to show to the judge? Let's start with that um, to begin To get with. this rabbit ready, I always start by cleaning out their ears and trimming their nails. Okay. Because you always want to make sure that they don't have any types of ear mites or anything, because that's going to be an automatic disqualification. Okay. Um, then I just start by grooming them and making sure that they don't have any knots or stains in their fur. Okay. So you don't give a bath to a rabbit though, do no. you? Okay. And a lot of things like pigs and cattle get baths, but rabbits usually don't get baths. Chickens no. will get a bath yeah. too. Uh, but these do not get that. Ear mites, same thing that gets into the real inside of their ear yeah. and you can see, take a Q-tip in there and you can see the problem that's in there. So that's what you've gotten ready for. Clip the nails so it doesn't scratch as bad. Yeah. They still will, won't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you pick up a rabbit wrong, it's going to end up scratching. Let's do that to begin with. How do you handle a rabbit? To handle a rabbit, you kind of, they call it like the football tuck, so you want to hide their eyes because they're scared of heights. Okay. So if they don't see how high they're up, they won't necessarily try and jump. Okay. So if you try and hold them in like the crest of your arm, All right. then they feel a lot safer and more comfortable. Okay. But then I also have rabbits that they want to perch on like my neck, and so I just let them do that. So they're not got a problem at all. But the safe way is to go like yes. you are to begin with, and, and if you've got a rabbit that's really comfortable with it, you can let them do whatever. Yeah. Okay, so if I was getting ready to show this rabbit, mm -hmm. I've put the nails, I've done, I bring it out, I bring it out under my arm, and then usually what ends up happening is the judges lined up here and a bunch of people have their rabbits in a row yeah. in a little kind of open box and they check them out going down the line. What's that judge looking for in your rabbit? With any rabbit, the judge is looking for automatic disqualification. So that can be anything from like weight to any diseases that they okay. have. Okay. Um, but then once you get into like the actual breed standard, then there's the standard of perfection, which the judge is supposed to go by. So a Dutch rabbit is supposed to look like a Dutch rabbit? Yes. Okay. So if you had a big white spot on the back back here, would that be a disqualification? Yeah. Okay. All right. So they're supposed to look like those different breeds. Yes. <clears throat> now you had mentioned weight. Yeah. Um, what's this supposed to weigh? 
Ideally, you want the Dutch to be four and a half pounds, but their maximum is five and a half. Okay. So there are different weights that they're supposed to be involved with. Like if, and this is a breeding rabbit. Yeah. This is for breeding purposes. Then you also have meat rabbits too, mm -hmm. and they call it a meat pen or a single fryer. Yes. Are the two terms. Those are commonly Californians and New Zealand. Okay. So that's what you're taking a look at in those end of things. So what are those supposed to weigh, those animals? Those you want to, when doing a meat pen, you want to try and get them to be as uniform as possible. And they're aiming for about five pounds. Okay, aiming for five pounds. We're good. So, all right, judge is judging it. Let's get back to that. What's he looking for? For the Dutch, they're supposed to have, their cheeks are supposed to be rounded. And then if you look over here. Okay. This stops on their bottom of their feet. Okay. Those are supposed to be uniform as well. All right. So, rabbits don't like to be turned over, obviously. No, and they're really antsy normal. because of the show. Yeah, yeah. Have been, got turned over too many times. Yeah. Show's already over, by the yes. way. How well did this rabbit do? This rabbit did pretty good. He got first place in his class, and then he got best opposite for his variety. Okay. So, what else are we looking for on this rabbit? Um, you want the line back here to be pretty straight, and okay. you want their blaze to be okay. equally proportioned. So that's a breed characteristic yes. we're looking at. They're all breed characteristics for this one. Uh, if this was a meat rabbit, what would we be looking at then? Meat rabbits are basically, I think you're looking for fullness. Okay. Basically just because you want them to have that meat characteristic right. and to be able to hold that meat. Otherwise, for commercial breeds, you don't really want them for the meat purposes, so it's just a lot of fancy things that okay. are particular. So I've watched this judge before sit there and kind of crunch them up. Mm -hmm. That's the meat rabbits they're doing that with. Well, it? you can also, each rabbit has a different type of pose that they're supposed to be. Okay. So they'll even scrunch them up to a fact to where they're supposed to be posed in other breeds All as right. well. So if it was a meat rabbit, one of the things we'd be looking at is how thick the loin is down through here mm -hmm. and how heavy the muscling is in the rear end of it and also the front end. Because yes. we're looking at muscle, and that's mm -hmm. the meat in this situation, and that's what they would be looking for. The other thing I've noticed through the years, if they got a pen of three, they like to look for uniformity yeah. too. They want to make sure that they're all pretty much in the same weight range, some of them similar to that, so they all look pretty much yeah. the same. All right. So what are we not covered with this rabbit? Anything we've missed out on? I don't think so. Okay, so that's how we show a rabbit. That's some of the things they're looking for the judges here at the Fulton County Fair. We'll just kind of look at uh, or have to look at some of the different rabbits down the line and see what different kind of breeds there might be. Smart Kepler, Purdue Extension Service. Riley Towell, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Mark Kepler, Purdue University Extension Educator here at the Fulton County Fair. Um, we're going to talk today about poultry. We're going to start out talking a little bit about uh, some of the uh, turkeys and go down the line with a few others. My host, my guest, I mean, is Evan. Evan Co my name is Evan Cohagen. I'm a seven-year 4-H member. I do turkeys and poultry, but I also do poultry judging, so I know quite a little bit about poultry. And you also have rabbits too, don't you? Yes, I do. Okay, what breed of rabbits did you have? I got New Zealand's, they're meat rabbits. So we they're breed a white colored yes, rabbit. Yes. Okay. And we breed them for meat, and there's all sorts of varieties of the rabbit. There's, okay. They range from red, blacks, brokens, uh, which they just now recognize blue New Zealand's, and there's also white New Zealand's. Oh, wow, I didn't know there's blue New Zealand's. Yes. So we're going to start out with your turkeys to begin with. All right. There's about eight, I think, or nine turkeys here at the fair this year. Uh, and there are a bunch of different breeds or a couple breeds, or how do we know the turkeys? Well, there's really just two main breeds of turkeys, the bronze, which are what's behind us, and they got whites down there. Okay, and so we'll take a look at them and see them. And so the bronze turkey, you did pretty well, didn't you? Yeah, I got reserve grand champion. And is that on all the turkeys or just the bronze turkey? Uh, all the turkeys. Okay. I won the bronze division. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this turkey, and we're going to find out what they look for in a turkey. By the way, before we get to that, I'll stop and do this. These aren't the turkeys normally that people have at their house when yeah. they eat a turkey for Thanksgiving. It's usually a different kind. It's usually a white turkey of some type. Yep. And the bronze are, they're referred to as a heritage breed, I believe? Uh, yes, I believe so. So where did you get your turkeys from? I got them from a Smith's Farm store. Okay. We buy them every year and we raise them from the little hashlings when they come in, and about two, three days old, and then we raise them up to what they are now. How long did that take? Uh, since March. March to uh, July? Yeah. That's a lot of growth pretty quick then, mm -hmm. pretty much so. Did they weigh these turkeys by any chance? 
No. Okay. I just wondered if they knew a weight on them. So in that period of time, you've got a turkey that's ready. And these are all ready to be harvested or, or, yes. or consumed. All right. So let's take a look at this bronze turkey. All okay? right. Let's go ahead and climb in there and grab him out of here. Now, if you all grab right. the legs. And... Okay, so we're taking a look at this bronze turkey. This is the right way to hold on to it, okay? Yes. Okay, back there like that. How come you don't pick him up by his legs? Well, you can do that. Okay. It's, so if you grab the legs and put them together. Okay, I'll it's... do that. And then put you. Put them together? Yep. Okay. And now we let him down. Right. And that's upside down. Yep. And then you just grab him like this. All right. Yeah, he'll do that. Okay, looks good. Now you're ready to show? Yep. What are we, what am I, if I'm a judge, okay, let me have the bird. All righty. You tell, you tell me, Mr. Judge, how you're looking for, what so you're looking for. So basically all I'm looking for is this breast meat and then the thigh meat right here. Okay, that's a really breast meat of a yeah. turkey and the, and the legs. Yep. So basically you're looking for the width of the breast as well as the kim bone, which comes back through here. Now you want this to flatten off. You don't want it to just drop off. Okay. So you want it flat. Uh, you want it to be longer and wider through here. Okay. So it's the judge will go through like this, and then he'll do this, and it's pretty much he's pretty much just measuring Measure the breast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. yeah, go ahead. And then he'll come through and just kind of grab the thighs and just look at them, look at the drumsticks and the thighs and. Pretty much it. So I was this re guy had a pamphlet from the state fair, and the state fair said they sell forty some thousand drumsticks during the state fair. Yeah. I was like, wow! I didn't realize that was an incredible amount of drumsticks that being sold during that time. Yeah. So the drumsticks are important, and the breast is important, yep. and that's the two things we're looking at. And this one judged very well in that area. Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and put him back. All right. So then all we'll do is we'll take him like that and grab his one wing. Okay. And you flip him over. Okay. And you just kind of let him down. And he's got my mic. There we oh. go. <laughs> and just like that. Okay. So let's go uh, take a look at the white bird down here. All righty. Okay, now this just says white turkey. Has it got a different breed name than just white turkey that you know of? Not that I know of. Okay. I just know right. it as a white. The white turkey. So, okay. Yep. And um, again. Oh, broad breasted white. Okay. There and and we they go. give that name because. These turkeys really excel at the exponential growth of the breast. And they produce a lot more meat in a short amount of time compared to the, the bronze turkeys. Okay. Um, I know that, like I would say, that the turkey you would buy at Christmas time or Thanksgiving time that the normal producer would buy is a white turkey. And, and bronzes are grown by people around and they will develop into and people do eat them. But the ones in the storage are normally the whites. Yes. And there are specific breeds of white turkey that are being bred with the great big breast and are utilized for that kind of thing. In fact, well, to me is one of the most interesting things about these guys is the fact that uh, these turkeys uh, sometimes are so big breasted they have trouble breeding. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't they can't breed because they've got such a large breast and they can't get the and so they do artificial insemination a lot to turkeys. I don't think that's the case here, but no. that goes on. So okay, we've got these turkeys. Anything different about this turkey as far as showing it or not showing wise it's not. But you see with the bronze, most of the time you'll get reserve grand champion. Just because of the fact of these white turkeys are bred for that meat factor. Yeah. It's they just got a bigger breast, a wider breast, and a longer breast. And the and the kim bone goes back uh, straighter and it doesn't drop off as much. So it's a kind of been that way in a lot of breeds of animals. Gee whiz, when it comes to milking cows, it's always been Holsteins. Uh, when it comes to beef breeds, there's a lot of different beef breeds out there, but certain ones excel, it mm -hmm. seems like, more than others. And these especially have been bred for that purpose. Yep. So that's a little bit about showing up uh, a turkey. Let's go on and take a look at some other poultry that's here in the barn. Okay? All right. All right. So now we're going to talk about the, the chickens. And if you think about a chicken, then we either want the meat or we want the eggs off of them. And so within that categories, we have certain birds that are bred for meat characteristics. And that's these birds right here, Evan. Yes. Uh, these are called what kind? Uh, Cornish crosses. And pretty much anybody who's showing a meat animal bird is showing a Cornish cross. Yeah. What is so great about a Cornish cross? Well, a lot of the, they're easier to produce. They can produce mass numbers of them. 
as well as just it's easier because when you look at the chicken that's in the store, that's what this is. Yeah. It's their Cornish crosses. So when you go and buy frozen chicken breasts, those big producers that are producing all the meat birds just have tens of thousands of them in this, like a long building. Yeah. And they're just easier to produce as well as they can grow, gain weight pretty fast. Pretty fast. A fast being how fast, do you know? Uh, I believe it's six weeks. Six weeks we go from a chick to a, an animal that's ready to A five pound chicken. That's fast. That's real fast. And that's one thing that I don't think anybody realizes when we think a look at this, how fast they grow. Because they grow so fast, they do have issues sometimes mm -hmm. uh, along with that. But they are an extremely big-breasted bird that we have with these Cornish cross. And so if I was judging this, what would I be looking for? Once again, you'd be looking at the breast meat. Okay. As well as the leg meat. That's really... And then if it's really close between the breasts and whatnot, you'd look at the, the, the feathers of the bird to make, see if it's in. Other than that, you're just looking at the same thing when you're looking at meat birds. So, have you ever shown a Cornish cross? No, okay. I have not. And I, I have not, my children have not done that either, but I do know one thing is that breast is so big and so low that, that when you go to clean them up for the fair and you give them baths, do you give your turkeys baths? Yes, we do. Okay, well, if you give these baths, you're forever trying to clean that up because that breast is just down in the manure, basically. It's such a large thing to do. Um, and so that's what we're really looking at. So these birds are washed ahead of time and, and, and looked into. And as we look through these different Cornish crosses, you'll see some that have some real feathering issues. Uh, again, it's warm, it's summertime, mm -hmm. and so they start losing their feathers fairly quickly. Yeah, okay, that's the meat birds. Next thing we're gonna do is take a look at the other part, and that is the ones that lay eggs. And within the egg producing birds, there are what they call dual purpose. And we'll take a look okay, at that. Okay, Evan, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the different chickens that are here. These are called exhibition. Now, what, they're different breeds. Yes. And so the judge is looking for what in these different animals? Uh, basically, it's just, how well their feathers are on them, and how well they're taken care of, and what they look like, and prettiest, and pretty much all exhibition birds are, are show birds. Okay. So it's like show rabbits, you know, there's certain characteristics that that judge is looking for compared to meat rabbits where it's, or meat birds where it's just, you're looking at the meat. Now these guys, you're looking at the, you could be looking at, you're looking at the breed potential. Okay. As well as their breeding uh, habits. So you're looking at the best bird that can be, that can transfer those good genetics on into the next birds. Okay, so there's this great big thick book out there, and they have the same thing for rabbits, and it's mm -hmm. what these breeds are supposed to look like. Yep. And so this one here in front of us is called a Brahma. Yep. And it's supposed to look like this. <coughs> yeah. And so one of the things the judge is looking at is to make sure it looks like what it's supposed to look yep. like. Yep, and that's, <coughs> if it doesn't look like it, or if it doesn't have enough characteristics of that bird, they will either give it a red or disqualify it because okay. it doesn't meet those breeds' uh, standards. So if I got two birds set here and they both meet the breed standards, then what is the judge looking at for those birds? Then, then he's just really looking at the overall appear, appearance of the bird. So he's looking at, is this bird molting? Is this bird uh, just... How, molting, losing feathers. Feathers, yes. Yeah. And that's basically all he's looking at is the appearance and what characteristics he thinks that that bird can produce pass on okay. that's better than the other bird. Okay. So and that's that's and, and, and so we're not really looking at the egg laying ability of these animals. Are we looking at that or just the the, the prettiness you might say? Well it depends. Like if you're looking at these Brahmas here, <coughs> this Brahma's a rooster, so you're you can't judge the egg, egg laying ability. Yeah. Of it. So you're just looking at how pretty it is. Okay. All right. That's what we're looking at. You see it's there. So this is an exhibition bird. If we're looking at the egg laying ability of it, what category are we looking at then? Then we're looking at egg layers. Okay. Which there's a whole class of just for egg layers. Okay, let's go take a look at some egg layers. Okay, okay. so what ends up happening is we have chickens that produce eggs. We have chickens that look pretty. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about exhibition chickens. And we have chickens that are meat purposes. We've had those. But we got in this cage here a Rhode Island Red. What's that breed? What's its what? What is it known for? Well, Rhode Island Reds are one of those like undercover egg layers. Okay. They're not as well known as the white leghorns at producing eggs. 
these guys can produce eggs as well as they look pretty. So you kind of got that exhibition look into them as well as egg laying. Okay, so they can lay eggs, but nowhere near as good as a leghorn. So yeah. if I was to go out into a commercial chicken house where they're producing eggs, thousands of eggs, I would have leghorn chickens, which are white chickens in there producing those eggs. Mm. Uh, they probably won't have this Rhode Island red there. But if on my farm I wanted to produce some eggs, I, and I also wanted to have something for meat purposes, they call these dual purpose. So I can eat these or I can have eggs laid from them also. Yep. Some people like brown eggs. And that's where these Rhode Island reds come into. These guys produce brown eggs, as well as the white leghorns you see in the store, they produce the white eggs. Just because it's funny, but if you look at the feathers of the bird, yeah. that can almost tell you what color eggs they're going to lay. Okay. And there's also birds that lay a, like a teal color egg. Greenish color, yeah. Yeah. So that's really its... And there's some bluish looking eggs too, and there yep. are some really put out brown eggs, and they put out light brown eggs. But the reality is people like different ones of those. Is there any taste difference? No. That nah, really isn't down the line. But let's go on with that. If I was to take this chicken and run it outside where it's pecking on the ground, getting worms and, and getting uh, ants and anything else it wanted to eat, that egg will be different than it yes. has there. How would it be different? The taste because okay. of you're not feeding it corn and uh, extra oh, yeah. calcium supplements you're feeding it, it's free range. Yeah. So the egg's gonna taste like a free range. So it's gonna taste probably more organic and it's not gonna taste, it's not gonna have that bright yellow of an oak uh, yolk because it's not getting as much corn or right. yellow food right. into it. They say it tastes a little bit more along the line of uh, stronger is the term I've heard some people use. It's just, in other words, it's got more flavor to it. Yeah. And that's what an egg, and, and so when you buy a brown egg, it doesn't mean it's been running outside yeah. on the ground, and so but the, you will see a difference in the two of them. Okay, so we got different kind of breeds here, and we've talked about those different kind of breeds and how we are on poultry. One thing left, and we're going to do that one next. We're going to talk about the ducks. So anytime you're in a poultry barn, you hear the roosters crowing and you hear the ducks. The ducks are quite noisy and they like to talk a lot. And off to my left here are the ducks. There's a breed of ducks. What what is this breed? Uh, Pecans. Pecans. I like. P-E-K-I-N-S, Pekins? Yep. And they are a white breed of ducks. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's got to be almost 20, 20 pens of those here. That must be the popular breed then of that duck. Yes, very much. The so, one, no, no, continue. No, I just got to ask you, do you know what they're looking for in these ducks when they, when they judge them? Well, it depends, because if you got meat waterfowl, you're looking at the breast meat as well as the leg meat again, just like with the, the meat birds or the meat chickens as well as the turkeys. Turkeys, yeah. Now, if you got like a breeding pair, you're looking at that characteristics of passing on those good traits down to the young ones. And then they also have, I don't know if they have layers, but ducks also can lay the eggs, which are taste, uh, they taste to me better than chicken eggs, but they're bigger too, yeah. so. There's some people, again, to me it's a stronger flavor. Uh, you're, there is more flavor to a duck egg than there is the chicken eggs, and some people really like to have duck eggs, and some people raise ducks for those eggs purposes. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of people that exhibit ducks here at, at the fair. It's a very popular project. Again, when it comes to getting these ducks, you can get them at the local farm store, or mm -hmm. you can actually order them from breeders across the country and, and get them through that way also. So it's another one of those poultry exhibits that we have at our, our fair. It's really, really interesting. So when the judge comes here, he's looking at ducks, he's looking at turkeys, he's looking for fancy birds, he's looking for egg layers, and, and he's looking for meat characteristics. A whole lot of things, depending on what we're looking at in the poultry end of things. Anything else, Evan? No. All right. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate that chance to take a look at some of the birds here at the Fulton County Fair.